Hey yo, bend that shit. That's right, baby. That's right. That's Welcome back or welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chira, but everyone calls me Chi. And let's get straight into the video. So as y'all can see, I am finally back home from my sophomore year. It's crazy. It's already been two years at A&T and I'm now a junior. I'm actually an upperclassman now. So as y'all can see by the title of this video, we have my unpopular opinions about a and Meaning that if you are already a student at a and or you were a student at a and your opinion might be different than mine due to the fact that we have had different personal experiences, but my opinion is my opinion and I hope you can respect that. Please and thank you because some of these things that I have to say, y'all might not like them. And I have no problem with y'all not liking what I have to say, but I'm gonna speak on my truth and how I feel, like I always do. Cause if you're one of my real subscribers, you know, I always speak my truth. Nobody's gonna stop me and I'm not gonna stop now. So let's get straight into it. No more talking. Let's get into my unpopular opinions about a &T. Number one, this one, this one, I already know. I'm starting off very strong, but number one for me, the a and culture is dying. a and culture is dying. The a and that y'all see in 2023 is not the a and I saw as a high school senior looking to come to a and Nowhere near. Like, I saw a different type of a and before coming to a and than I do now as somebody that has been at a and for two years. And you know, a lot of the Aggies will like to pretend that the a and culture is there. Be so for real, be so for real. a and culture is not there, we're not ghetto. The Aggie priding isn't truly Aggie priding. And I will say this, I believe that TikTok set a and up for failure. TikTok set a standard for a and that we do not have right now. We make cute little vlogs, trust me, I am a victim of it. Well, actually, am I? For YouTube, yes. But everyone wants to make TikToks on A&T and, you know, first day of class fits and parties and Jiho and Aggie Fest and everything like that. And it sets up the people coming into A&T for failure because they expect it to be like this all the time. And it's not. It's not. It used to be. Back in 2010s, in the 2010s, the 20, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Then we hit 2020 and it just, down. And the reason why, as y'all can see, I'm getting so passionate about this is because we have the platform, especially now a t has the platform to be what we show on TikTok. I don't know why we're not doing it. Why are we not doing it? Why are we not doing it? And you know, I'm gonna take my fault where I can take my fault, but I vlog my personal experiences. Sometimes my vlogs are good. Sometimes my vlogs are bad, but I vlog it all. Some people, all you see is on TikTok making a cute little six second video of how Aggie Fest went. They go viral and that's the only vlog that they post about A&T. Y'all doing it for the views, not for the culture. Oh, it's a word. So yeah, like I said, A&T culture is dying. Don't worry though, I feel like we can change this. We can change this, especially in 2023, when we come back, I know for me personally, I'm going to try and make everyone that I'm around at that certain time, whether it might be a school event, party, I'm gonna try and make them feel like it is A&T on TikTok. I'm gonna try and make A&T, that ghetto A&T that I saw back in 2020, NK23, NK22. I want what they had their freshman year. I want that for y'all. I want that for all the new freshmen coming in. So I know I'm gonna take my part and I'm gonna try my best to do what I can, but I am only one person and I am not that higher up. I can do what I can, but she is only one person. It's gonna take the whole collective of A&T to really try and push and make A&T ghetto again. And if y'all don't believe me, I want y'all to go and search up A&T on Twitter back in from 2019 all the way down to 2016. They was lit. And compare that to how we are in 2023. I'm telling you there's a big difference. Just search it up. If you don't believe me, just search it up. Number two, another big one. Aggie Fest will forever and always be better than Jiho. If you don't know what Jiho is, it is the greatest homecoming on earth. Again, y'all know I'm Aggie pride until I die, but I'ma speak on what it is. And Jiho, it don't give the way that Aggie Fest do. I think it's just for me personally, I like a more confined space. I like a close personal space. 
with Jiho, there's just too many people. There's a ridiculous amount of people at Jiho. And I'm not talking about just the homecoming, like, you know, day. I'm talking about the entire week. There's so many people on campus. It, it's too chaotic. So again, I think with me personally, I like Aggie Fest due to the fact that it's for a &T students. Yes, you know, you do have some people that come down for Aggie Fest, but it's not as many as they come down for Jiho. Um, traffic is less because during Jiho, traffic is ridiculous. The streets are actually pretty clear for the most part. Um, this year though, Aggie Fest did not really give the way that Jiho gave. I will say that. I will say that this year's Jiho did give a little bit more than Aggie Fest, but last year, Aggie Fest won. Next year, I'm gonna make sure that Aggie Fest wins because Jiho is something, but it's not. Mm, I don't know how to explain it. But for me personally, Aggie Fest will forever and always be better than Jiho. I think it's just better due to the fact that it's not that cold. It's actually warm. I can actually wear like nice fits and actually, you know, yeah. Well, I can wear nice fits whenever because I'm really like that. But I, I just like, I just like the vibes of Aggie Fest better than I like the vibes of Jiho. Oh, and also Jiho Homecoming Day. Yes, it's fun, and you know, yes, I get free food, but it's just extremely too crowded. Like it's dangerously too crowded. Like it's gotten to the point where it's too many people. Like it's, it's a ridiculous amount of people. Like, but yeah, Aggie Fest. Aggie Fest has my heart. Jiho, I love it, but Aggie Fest is forever where it will always b number three you cannot talk to every professor some of them really don't care literally some of them really don't care they're doing it for a paycheck they're not doing it because they care they're doing it for a paycheck um people will tell you oh no you can you can talk to any professor if you just put yourself out there you know if you go to the office hours some of them don't be at their office hours some of them just lecture and leave some of them don't respond to their emails in, until a week later so no you can't talk to every professor Every professor does not care about you. They are doing it for a paycheck. They get paid regardless if you pass or if you fail. And that's just how it is at almost every single school. So you cannot talk to every professor. No matter how much you might try, some of them just really don't care. Number four, you don't need an internship your freshman year. Like people will tell you, oh, you should get an internship your freshman year. You should get an internship your sophomore year. You don't need one. I promise you it's never that serious. If you don't get an internship, it's okay. I promise you it's okay. Also, I truly believe if it's an unpaid internship, you shouldn't be doing it. You can get a paid internship. It might take a little bit of time and you know, it might be a little bit harder if you have nothing on your resume, but you can still get a paid internship. I'd rather you get a paid job instead of getting a unpaid internship. Always make money. We are broke college students. You always need to make money. Yes, internships look good on the resume, but so do jobs. At least they know you're working. Especially if you're a freshman, they know that you're not gonna have no like you know professional experience because you're a freshman. But at least you're putting yourself to do something else besides an internship, and you're still gonna be making money if you have a job. Sorry, y'all. I had to change the lighting. I felt like it was too harsh on me. But yeah, like I said, you don't need an internship your freshman year. People will tell you you need an internship. You don't need one. I didn't have an internship my freshman year. I still don't have an internship my sophomore year, but I'm doing things that I can put on my resume that don't have to do with internships that people will still look at, people will actually still appreciate. Okay, number five. This one's a little bit long, but it's gonna make sense. Basketball season is better than football season, but track and field has the most genuine athletes. What I mean by this is I honestly believe, and no offense to my football friends, cause you know, I love y'all, but Basketball season, the vibes inside Club Corbett are just better. Honestly, for most of the football games, people come for the band, not for the team. I'm gonna watch the football game because I actually enjoy football and you know, I like seeing my friends play. But basketball, I don't know. I think it's just because one, it's inside so we don't have to worry about rain and stuff like that. And two, it's just a smaller space. So like, it's actually vibes. Football season, you'll see people come out for most of the games, but you'll see more people come out when one, the homecoming game, or two, we're playing another HBCU, which doesn't happen often anymore due to the fact that we changed conferences, in my opinion, very stupid. And then what I say when I mean track and field has the most genuine people, track and field has the most people that actually act like regular human beings. And like, they know they're athletes, but they don't use their athletic power over people or like, push it does that make sense i love my track and field friends they know i love them track and field y'all got my heart um but yeah they're actually the most genuine people like you can go and talk to them regularly and they will you know invite you in they are the most inviting group out of every athletic group that i have met so yeah no offense like no offense to other teams you know some of them are cool the men's basketball team y'all play good but Yikes, but track and field, their players, love them. They are the most genuine athletes that I have met on a &T's campus. Number six, this one is another controversial, but in my opinion, the mini calf is better than the big calf, except on Fridays. 
I said what I said. The mini calf is better than the big calf, except on Friday. I'm sorry. I was a fried fish girl for the past two years. And then the ending of sophomore year, where was I at? Fried chicken Friday at the big calf. I don't know what it is, but the chicken actually do be busting. The fish, it don't be fishing right. It don't be as crisp as it should be. But besides that, Williams only has the fried chicken Friday. Besides that, my butt will be inside that mini calf. Cause they have, I don't know, they have more unique options. Like, except the time that they try to make jollof rice, which no, don't, don't ever do that again. But they be having more options for real. <gasps> oh, oh my gosh. I thought I deleted my whole notes. But yeah, mini calf is better than the big calf, except on Fridays. Fried chicken Fridays will always have my heart. Number seven, again, will be controversial. A and T is a bougie school. A and T is not ghetto, and A and T sometimes it can be humble, but a lot of times it's not. A and T is a very bougie school, and I don't know why. Because we are all regular people at the end of the day. There's somebody higher than us. I don't know what it is, but people tend to forget that when they come to A and T. There is always someone higher than you, and it's not only A and T students that are bougie. It's A and T staff as well. A and T staff is bougie. We come to these events and just stand there. And don't get me wrong, I've come to events and I've stood there before, but a lot of times I try my best to make something out of it. And if you know me and you've been in events with me, I try my best to make something out of it unless there's nothing to give. If there's nothing to give, I'm not going to push myself to give something. If there's something, even a little bit of juice that I can push, I'm going to try. I'm going to try and enjoy an event, but I can't enjoy an event if there's nothing to give. So a and is a bougie school. We are not ghetto anymore. Sad. I wish we was, but we not. A and T, let's change that. Aggies, let's change that. We have the platform, remember? It, I truly believe, I think, is because we try to put up this persona, I guess, because we don't want to be seen as something. But in reality, nobody cares. Number eight. Depending on who you ask, this might be controversial, but I feel like a lot of people will agree with me. Party tickets for A and T parties are too expensive now. And this goes for all, all party groups. Even Not even all party groups. Every single party, house party, um, school event, all the tickets are too expensive. People forget that we are still college students. You want me to spend $25 on a party ticket to waste four hours of my life? I'm a business major. That don't even make sense to me. Why am I paying $25 for a party ticket? And yes, I have paid that much, but I will never do that again. I'm sorry, I'm not doing it anymore. I can't do it anymore. If that party ticket is more than $15, I'm not going. I'm not going. I don't care who says who is what is gonna be there, what they're gonna be doing, I don't care. Air. They used to be cheap. I also do say that it also is the venue's fault. Greensboro has the highest prices in venues that I've ever seen in my life. And it's ridiculous because it's a Greensboro venue. Venues in Maryland, in DMV, in Atlanta are cheaper than venues in Greensboro. How does that make sense? They play a role into how much money people have to pay to get inside those venues that don't even be good, that don't even be spacious. <sighs> I gotta put some lip gloss on my lips. I get even dry from all this talking. Number nine, the honors program at ANT is overrated. Sorry, not sorry. The amount of stuff that you have to do for what you're getting out of it in return is ridiculous. You can get everything that you're getting out of the honors program without being in the honors program. With the honors program, you have to have a certain amount of hours, a certain amount of honors credits, keeping up a certain GPA. And in reality, you know, it works for certain people but it doesn't work for old people. And this is coming from somebody that was an honor student. I was an honor student my freshman year, y'all know this. I truly believe you can still have a high GPA and not be in the honors program. You can still get the internships that they're getting and not be in the honors program. The honors program is something that is used for your resume and that is really it. The only thing the honors program really gives is that housing and that housing is not really guaranteed anymore if you know, you know. Me personally, I say do it your freshman year because it does help because you know, housing is better. That, that is my opinion. I still love all the people that are in the honors program, you know, but I am not in the honors program anymore and I have a 3.52 GPA. Number 10, pretty privilege is very, very, very real at a and Cause I know me, I'm not the best looking girl. I believe that I am a great looking person. I'm very attractive to myself. Other people might not believe that, but I know in my heart that I am. Just look at the material. 
but no pretty privilege is a very real thing at A&T I definitely see the difference of how people act towards me when you know I have a nice outfit on when I have my makeup done when I have my hair done and then compared to when I'm not looking the best or like when I have just sweatpants on the days where I know that I am looking good like I've done my makeup I've done my hair like everything is tip top shape I've never had to hold a door. The days that I'm, I'm not at tip top shape, nobody opens the door for me. That's ridiculous. I'm still a woman at the end of the day. Why am I opening doors? I'm still the same person that I am without like a full face of makeup on. So why am I getting treated differently? I truly believe that everyone is attractive to somebody. They might just not be attractive to you or you might not be attracted to them, but somebody is attractive to somebody. So I really never understood why pretty privilege plays a part, but it is very true about A&T. If you are very pretty or you're very attractive or you're very fine at A&T, you will see the difference on how people act towards you compared to your fellow classmates or fellow friends that may not be as attractive as you. And it doesn't matter the personality because I've seen people at A&T that are very attractive, you know, from an external aspect, but internally they are very ugly. And they still get better things than somebody that might have a great personality but isn't as attractive to, you know, the majority. And with me personally, I'm going to act however I act regardless if I have a full face of makeup on or I have no makeup on. Because I know that I am attractive to somebody. Somebody is attractive to me. They're going to like this personality or not. If they don't like my personality and they're only here for me for the looks, you shouldn't be around them. Remember that it's not about the looks, it's about the personality. Because at the end of the day, we're all going to get old and we're all going to look funky. Number 11. People will tell you you need to be watching what you're doing at parties da, 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 da. what you do at parties does not really matter what you do at parties at A&T does not really matter I will say it one more time what you do at parties at A&T does not really matter I say this because I have quite literally with my own eyes see people act a fool and a half at a party and still get better stuff than somebody that's acting and sitting and standing at the wall. People might talk about it for a couple hours, but that's how people talk. People talk about the trending thing for a couple hours and then they move on. Regardless of how you act externally, if you know what you're doing internally, you gonna get the right thing. Have fun. The most somebody can do is talk. Don't act bougie at a party just because you think somebody's watching you. I promise you everyone wants to have fun. They're just not gonna have fun until somebody else is having fun or the majority of people is having fun and they realize that nobody's actually caring about what they're doing. And at the end of the day, you're a college student. Your college years are about, you know, living your life, learning things about you. So live your life and learn things about yourself. Point blank period. Number 12. A&T isn't a fashion school. A&T is not a fashion school you do not have to have the best fit you do not have to have all designer PSA a lot of these people that swear up and down are wearing designer or wearing reps and don't get me wrong I love me a good pair of rep but don't try to act like it's the real thing if it's not it's okay we are in 2023 why are you lying about what you have we can't be paying a thousand dollars for pairs of shoes some people can but me personally I can't so I'm not gonna lie and say that I have that money when I don't a lot of these fashion people are wearing reps and they're lying straight to y'all faces when they say they the real thing because they're not they just have a good rep website okay so you can wear your sheen honestly i truly believe the fit isn't because of the name the fit is how you wear it remember that please please i i hate when i see people trying to keep up with the fashion trends at a t because they see other people doing it other people have that type of money if you don't have that type of money don't try to act like you have that type of money be confident in yourself in the clothes that you wear because at the end of the day people will enjoy an outfit that is made to cater the person instead of them trying to keep up with fashion trends number 13 I would like to give a little warning before I say this. Remember, it is Aggie pride until I die. I love my HBCU. I think we are number one in general. I think we are number one in general. But I don't believe that a and is the most lit HBCU. At this time of age, I do not believe that a and is the most lit HBCU. Like I've said in this entire video, I believe a and has the platform we have the platform. We just need to execute the plan correctly. a and used to be the most lit HBCU. If you had asked me, like my freshman year, do I believe that a and is the most lit HBCU? I would have said yes. But comparing last year and the years before I came into a and to how a and is now, we're not the most lit HBCU. And I do believe it's due to the fact that, like I said, a and is a bougie school. We aren't ghetto. We don't give what's supposed to give. DMV HBCUs, me personally, they have a hands down, besides Howard. 
because Howard's not in the picture. But Morgan, Bowie, they actually, you know, they be doing stuff. They be doing stuff without a care in the world, and that's how it's supposed to be. a and is not the most lit HBCU anymore. I'm sorry. I love my I love my school down, and I'm a represented. And I do believe that we have our lit moments. But to call us the most lit HBCU in general right now, eh, kind of, eh. Like, we're lit, but we can be more lit. And that's why I'm not saying that we're the most lit. And if you disagree with me, that's okay. That's your opinion. I, I don't know. I just feel like we're missing something that a t knows that we can give, and we just haven't given it yet. That's why I, I there's more. There's more that we can give. We are at number 14. Don't worry, y'all. We're almost done. Number 14. a and isn't actually that big. We're just overpopulated. Like, a and campus as a whole, it is big. It's bigger than most campuses. But it seems bigger because there's just so many people at a and Too many people at a and a and keeps accepting more people than they're supposed to. And then we get more people on campus and more things get crowded. And that's why the lines are so long. That's why the lines to the mini calf is coming out the door of the student center. That's why the lines are wrapping around places. That's why the lines are wrapping around Corbett is because we have too many people on this campus. So a and isn't really that big. We just have a lot of people on a campus that is big, but not as big as it needs to be. But you you soon realize that a and isn't as big as people make it seem. Yes, it's a lot walking wise, and that's because of the way that they set up a and Don't know why, but a and really is not as big as people make it seem. You can get places pretty quickly. Number 15, people say all the time, everyone's the same. Everyone has the same opportunities at a and In a sense, yes. But depending on what type of organizations you're in or depending on who you know, you can get better options. Don't hold me on that. Well, actually quote me on that. that I said what I said. Everyone is really not the same at A&T. Some people have that like source of connection and they can get what they want. I will not say that everyone is the same at A&T or that everyone has the same, you know, chances. That's a lie. That's a lie. You, everyone has the same opportunity, but does everyone have the same chance? No. There's a difference between opportunity and chance. Remember that the time will come when it's meant to come. As my mentor Becca would say, rejection is God's free direction. If you get rejected in certain things, it is okay. Your time is not then. God has something else planned for you. Again, if that's what you believe in. Yeah, y'all get it. Okay, my last unpopular opinion for this video. We don't have a lot of Aggie men. And people will come and be like, oh, but my friends, y'all, that's your friends. We have over 13,000 students on this campus. That means we probably have over 5,000 men on this campus, probably even more. And you only get a couple hundred that actually act like genuine men, that actually hold the door for a woman, that actually have proper etiquette. Aggie men don't be doing. Aggie men don't be menning. They're Aggie boys, point blank period. I, that's, that's the last thing I'm gonna say. I have some friends that are Aggie men, and I have some friends that aren't. The boys at A&T, y'all need to do better. If you're a boy and you're coming into A&T, do better. In my lifetime, I've probably only seen two people run to a door to open the door for me so I don't have to touch it. And I've been there for two years. If they can't open the door, they shouldn't be able to open up those. Y'all don't wanna hear it. Well guys, that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you don't like what I said, keep it to yourself, please, and thank you. Again, like I said, these were my opinions on a and I I am Aggie Pride until I die, y'all know this. A-G-G-I-E, what? Yeah, that's me. Y'all know I'm Aggie Pride until I die. I just have some certain opinions on a and and I believe that a and has a platform to change and be better. And I believe that we will get there at some point. Fingers crossed it's this year. I hope it is. I'm gonna try my best on my part. And if you're watching this video and you're an a and student, let's, you know, try and try and make something change. But yeah, that is the video. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. If you have any other video ideas, my DMs are open, let me know. My comment section is open. Drop video ideas on what y'all wanna see over the summer because I'm here to cater to y'all. Um, Again, make sure you share this video with any incoming Aggies that you may know. NK27, I am ready for y'all. I hope y'all are ready for me. And I will see you guys in the next video. Y'all be safe, bye.